And uh, you've probably picked up a message from tonight that things are happening in this community. It is moving forward. And the acceleration, I tell you at the moment, is very, very fast indeed. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon rather, Linda is taking the advance party to uh, Southern Ireland, uh, to Cork, where there's a, a Maranatha outreach. Um, only a little while ago, she was in the north of Ireland. When, when did you go back to the north of Ireland? March, but we're going March, again in July. March, then again in July. And uh, they're planning all kinds of visits to Uganda and Malawi next year. Uh, there are now 150 Maranatha prayer cells scattered around the country, and they're growing very rapidly. There are three more Maranatha groups now, and we've got about 50 in the country. What I want you to know is that we don't shoot off in all directions. We listen to what God says, and we respond obedience and, and readiness, um, availability. And so what you find is where there is an issue facing the country, um, instead of uh, Maranatha people saying, why doesn't someone do something? God uh, gives us a kick and says, you do it. And so now we've got spearhead groups in the Maranatha community. One, Noel's on it, which is looking at the occult, Another looking at secular humanism, another at Islam, another at Israel, another at the persecuted church. And these groups are intensively working to produce material which can then be spread right across the churches in this country later this year. There's terrible ignorance about Islam. There's terrible ignorance about the occult, which is growing like a fire in this country. There's terrible ignorance about the challenge of secular humanism, which is going to bring persecution in this country and already is doing. That doctor who was, who was before the GMC this week was in my house at our fellowship on Wednesday of this week. And the evidence we've got now, the rising tide of, of persecution of Christians in this country is horrendous and is almost unknown in the churches. Things are happening. The spirit is moving. And the gospel of Jesus is about changing people and changing situations. If you're only interested in changing situations, you haven't got the gospel. If you're only interested in seeing individual people change, you haven't got the gospel. The gospel is about transforming entirely people's way of life. Transforming societies in entirety. That is why, if you go into the international arena as an Englishman, you're embarrassed. Why? Because you go to places like Indonesia, South Korea, Colombia, uh, many parts of Africa, and you will see massive movements of Christians. They're not deafeningly silent as we are in our country. They're getting on with the job of proclaiming the gospel. They're getting on with the job of standing for justice and peace and truth and righteousness. And now, this year, we are at a point of, I think, the word tipping is correct, uh, it's make or break. Uh, there's no ch country on earth with more shut churches than in Britain, did you know? We're top of the lead for closed down churches. Uh, we had a year of evangelism a few years ago, a decade of evangelism, during which nearly a million people stopped going to church in a decade of evangelism. And we are now facing crisis. We either change or we die. I was at a, a meeting in the House of Lords <coughs> four years ago, which Maranatha called. We called all the leaders of the major churches with roots over, overseas together. There were 38 leaders from all continents. And I asked them a question. Are you prepared to be honest when you look at our country? And they looked very, very uncomfortable. I said, look, you know, we don't want you to be polite any longer. What happened? One by one, they began to break down in tears. One by one, people were coming from Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, Botswana, people from Pakistan. And they were saying, we didn't realize this country had fallen so low. But they didn't want to hurt. They were too polite. We don't see it. The world does. Uh, and I believe 
that the uh, the MPs' expenses, the the uh, inquiry at the moment in the High Court, um, the corruption in the press, uh, the collapse of the banks, you list all the bad news of the last four or five years. They all point to crisis. And it isn't a political crisis. It isn't a financial crisis. It isn't a social crisis. It's a spiritual crisis. There is a battle now taking place for the soul of Great Britain. And it's a life and death battle. If we don't wake up to this, the battle's lost. Maranatha has had this call this year to mobilize. And we take this very seriously. That means that if you're talking about the healing ministry, you do it. You do it. Then and there. I had experience of this. And some of you now have been in and out of hospital for the last two years with cancer and I can't get my tongue around. Treble A's, what is it? I don't know what the treble A is. But anyway, something to do with an aneurysm in your aorta. And other things. And I'm going to Moorfield Eye Hospital tomorrow morning in London. Appointment at 12. Uh, but God's told me, <coughs> you don't stop your healing ministry when you're ill. <coughs> Apply that to the nation. We're a sick nation. And God's calling us to a healing ministry. So therefore, when I'm into hospital, over and over again, I suddenly find that things are, are turned upside down. And when I went to Salford Royal Hospital, I was struck by, it was a tiring time, two weeks and six days in that war, praying for people, doctors coming, nurses coming, and over and over and over again, when I go to Morfields, I'm on my 22nd visit tomorrow. God seems to place me in a place where someone on one side or the other is in a high crisis. And I ended up, I ended up praying. Not intrusively, just because that's what God wants. Now, do we believe that God can do more in the next five minutes than you or I could do in 50 years? Yes. Well, let's do it. Let's stand. Let's now ask for God's Spirit to fall upon us. Now, this isn't a, a contrived emotional um, gesture, oh, bless you. It's, it's about putting our faith truly to the test. I feel like saying, fasten your seatbelt. Because whenever we've done this, there has been healing. Every time. Body, mind, spirit, healing. There is no prayer for healing which is never answered. Every prayer for healing is answered. It may not be in the way you want or desire or expect. But Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened up unto you. We've seen this Tuesday, this last week, in Parliament. The doors opened. We were involved in a situation where we took 70 church leaders with another group of a, a, a coalition of Christian organizations into St. Mary Undercroft Church, the Church of Parliament. And we went there for one hour of total silence. Got a note this morning, this afternoon, I've just been reading from one of the MPs, a senior MP, said, we want more hours of silence. And uh, what happened was we listened to God, then we went into committee room 16, and we shared what God had said. When you listen, you hear God. I got 20 pages of it to go through it in the car to London tomorrow. But uh, someone else is driving, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the point, the point of this is, it's happened this week. We heard God speak. We made history in Parliament. There's never been an hour of silence in the British Parliament. So the Speaker's chaplain told me. It's happened this week. Uh, the whole situation is coming to the boil. Now, symbols for spirit. Fire, water, wind, breath, the dove. All these symbols are recognizable. Will you take your right hand and place it now 
on the shoulder of the one to the right of you. And if there's no one there, just offer the hand up as a blessing. But we're now going to ask, very simply, that the Spirit of God, who is love, who is truth, will come upon us this moment. He may come in total silence. He may give you a, a sensation, either emotionally, or in your nervous system, physically, or deep within your spirit. And when the spirit comes upon us, we are promised you will receive power. Not for yourself, but power to move mountains. Power to bring healing to a wounded world. And so we reach out and we say to the Lord of the one our hand is upon. Lord, this moment, send your spirit to my brother or my sister. Your spirit who brings peace. Your spirit who brings hope. Your spirit who brings joy. Holy Spirit, penetrate deep to the heart of my brother and my sister. Put right what is wrong. Bring you. And for this, we say, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now let's take our left hand, and I'm going to ask Linda to say this prayer as we reach out to the one on our left. And can I again ask? that you expect to be an instrument of healing. This hand is no different from the hand of Jesus, your Bible. Jesus reached out and the sick were healed. Lord, thank you for my brother or my sister who's on my left right now. Thank you, Lord, that I know that they're my brother or my sister because you are our Father. And Father, I ask that you would involve my brother, my sister, right now in your love. Pray, Lord, that deep within their being they would know with an even deeper certainty that you are their Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are a Father who loves us without condition. I pray that my brother, my sister right now would know the depth of your love for them. That they would know that, Lord, they are made in your image. And that you have gifted them in a way that you've not gifted anyone else. Father, I ask that my brother, my sister right now might be able to just give you their one word, yes. That they might be willing to trust you, Father. Because you are trustworthy. And that in that trust they might be able to say yes to whatever you ask them to do. We unite our prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have asked. We have received. In the committee room in the House of Commons, I asked, have you heard God speak? And over 80 people said, yes. Have we received the touch of the Lord just now? Whisper. Have we received the touch of the Lord now? Yes. yes. Then let us thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.